Hi, it's Mike with Yugtastic. I'm standing here with Greg Bogus, who gave a talk about how he taught his dog to send him selfies, uh, which just kind of blows my mind entirely. Uh, well, thanks for taking the time to, to speak with me, but teaching your dog to send you selfies, that's, that sounds like a cartoon. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. So, so uh, we have this floor lamp mm -hmm. that has a has a, a switch that you step on. Yeah. And a, and a couple weeks after we got our dog, I was laying in bed. And I was like, I should teach her to, to turn that on and off yeah. so I don't have to get up and out of bed every day. <laughs> so uh, she's a super smart dog, we mm -hmm. came to find out, and, and using treats and like a lot of repetition. Yeah. We got her so she could run up and press the button. Yeah. And, and turn uh, the light on. And turn the light on and off. And so then it's like, well, hey, I've got this dog that can press a button. Uh, <laughs> now, yeah, the well, world is my oyster. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Like, what, what do you do with that? You know? Yeah. And uh, that seems really useful. Uh, and last year, so I work for Twilio. Mm -hmm. I serve as a developer evangelist for them. And um, we make it really easy for developers to send and receive text messages mm -hmm. and place and receive phone calls and just a few lines of code. And last year, we launched MMS, uh, mm -hmm. Picture Messages. And so I had never done hardware hacking before, mm -hmm. but I started tinkering with the Arduino Yoon, which is an Arduino that has Wi-Fi and Linux built in. Oh, okay. And figured out, um, really, just using some like rudimentary Python, uh, the Dropbox API mm -hmm. and Twilio API, I basically hooked a button up to this Arduino. Um, my dog runs up, presses the button, and takes a picture with a USB webcam. Yeah. Uploads it to Dropbox uh, to get a publicly accessible URL, mm -hmm. and then sends me my phone uh, an MMS with that uh, yeah. with a picture. So yeah, when it starts to have like little pieces of paper with writing on it, that's I think when you're gonna have trouble. yeah. But yeah. that's still pretty. I mean, have you gotten any like real fun ones with it, like licking the camera or anything like that? You know, it's, it's one of those things where. Um, it, it, so there are, surprisingly, some yeah. limitations to the dog sending selfies. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so the camera doesn't take the picture immediately. Oh, okay. So you got to get the dog to press the button and then pause for a second, which <laughs> oh, is really hard when there's a yeah, treat involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, so we, we, you know, we'll it's progress gone. along. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, along the way we'll progress. I was, I, you know, if I keep working on it, the next step would be to hook up a treat dispenser that <laughs> like doesn't dispense for a couple seconds. So she's got to yeah. figure out to like press the button. But we'll yeah. see. You know. Yeah. Now you need to teach your dog patience. Yeah, 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 good luck with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I wrote a blog post about it. It's uh, bit.ly slash doggy selfie, da doggy dash selfies. Okay. Um, I documented. I-E, D-O-G-G-I-E. D-O-G-G-Y. Oh, doggy. Okay. Dash selfies. Yeah, there's so many ways to spell it. You, yeah. Uh, and apparently dog selfies, bit.ly do slash dog selfies, selfies was taken. So. Really? That's. Yeah. Surprising, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I documented the whole process from like, taking the unit out of the box to creating a photo booth with the Arduino mm -hmm. Yoon to then using the Dropbox and, and Twilio API and, mm -hmm. and wrote the whole thing up there. And it was super fun intro to hardware hacking yeah. post. Yeah, and you know, that kind of dovetails into another topic. I talked with Trisha G about this. Uh, she's a developer advocate for JetBrains and you're a developer evangelist for Twilio and you've written some articles about what the role of a developer evangelist is. But as she described, it kind of really depends on where you're at. So I was hoping to hear about from your perspective, more information about what a developer evangelist is with Twilio and what your experience has been. Sure. Um, well, Twilio is an API company. Mm -hmm. So our, our product is an API from day one. Um, and so the developer evangelist role at Twilio is to serve the developer community because we... Even though like developers are our primary customers, if you try to just go out and hard sell a developer, or you try to use, you know, um, marketing gimmicks or whatnot, right. they're super smart, you know, and, and they're super savvy, and they'll catch on to that, and you'll and you'll just turn them off. Well, also wary if it looks Absolutely. too marketing y and that's a salesperson, uh, you know, just want nothing to do with it. Yeah, you know, have, have the exact opposite effect. So what Twilio has done since the beginning is to hire developers <laughs> to serve the community. And, and our job is to, the mission of our um, evangelism organization is to inspire and equip developers to change communications forever. And so we inspire and equip in different ways. Sometimes it's speaking at conferences. Um, so this dog selfie thing, um, this guy came up after, after the talk and said that was really inspiring. I'm like, that is, that's the goal. You yeah, know? Like, yeah. That's the goal is to get him to go do something that he didn't know he he could do yeah, get jazzed up about the yeah. whole idea. Yeah, and, and if he leaves off like the actual text part and just builds a photo booth, like that's fine. He's yeah. going to remember that Twilio was there, right? You know, and and if the need ever comes up in the future to send text messages or to place phone calls from within his app, 
then he'll remember Twilio. Right. You know, and so that's our our mission uh, as an organization is just to be present to serve the community. Sometimes that involves telling them about Twilio. Often it doesn't. Yeah. Um, and uh, and it's worked. Like Twilio, you know, it's been an incredible honor for the last. I've just been there 15 months, but Twilio now has 500,000 developers using their platform, and you know they're about six or seven years old now. Yeah. So. Yeah. So sometimes just leaving a good flavor in in somebody's mind, you know, even if they ended up not buying your product right now, they're going to remember, I had a good experience and it was right next to that brand. That's right. And, you know, but what matters is that you have people that are just happy when they're near the product. So they'll have good thoughts about it. So when they do come time to buy, they're going to, mm, you know, go go to you first. And, you know, like I've seen there's a lot of different um, uh, like you mentioned, the MMS uh, stuff and, and the phone number lookup. That <laughs> that alone it was a pretty uh, cool uh, 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 new service offering. What are some of the other things that Twilio is, is working on or, or publishing that would be interesting for developers who are working in the more social, more uh, connected applications. The thing we're most excited about is we just announced video, the Twilio video. So our okay. hope is to make it as easy to integrate video into your apps. So it's like WebRTC? Exactly. Okay. We're, we're using WebRTC. So if you've ever played with WebRTC in the past, um, you'll know that it's very... Uh, it's not very friendly, right. you know, and it's and it's the technology is there, but it is not a full-on solution. You still mm-hmm. have to build a lot of your own solution, and you have to deal with the connectivity issues, and um, you have to deal with cross browsers and iOS uh, and Safari. They they don't uh, they don't play nice with WebRTC, mm-hmm. so you have to deal with that solution if you want your iOS app to talk to an Android app or to talk to um, you know a web browser. And so we have built APIs around all of mm-hmm. this, and we're releasing SDKs. Next week at um, to at our conference signal. Oh, okay. So oh, that's the Twilio conference. But yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, we're putting on a, a conference uh, next week, and and uh, the attendees are going to be the first ones <laughs> that have access to the private beta, and then we'll open it up to uh, the public after we get some feedback on that. Yeah, that sounds really interesting because I, I, as somebody who's looked at how to deliver video over the internet. Yeah, and, right. I, not, but not necessarily. I I resisted YouTube for a while for. Uh-huh. My own detriment, but uh, you know, live and learn. But I've been looking at WebRTC and wondering like how I could use it. So I'm actually going to talk after this uh, All right. this interview. But thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. No I appreciate problem. it. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much.